Hey guys, it's Dr. Akiba Green here. There's been a lot of press lately about some new standards that have been put in place by some of the big thyroid organizations, the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, the Thyroid Society. They're saying that you don't need to run proper testing. They're saying TSH is enough. I'm here to talk about thyroid fact and fiction, give you some basic information that you need to know about your thyroid, what tests need to be run if you want to get properly diagnosed. Now, I am board certified in integrated medicine. I am a chiropractic physician. I am board eligible as a clinical nutritionist and I'm a certified gluten-free practitioner. I have years and hundreds of hours of experience in treating thyroid dysfunction in my office. I have a private practice in Charlotte, North Carolina, and so I've got a good bit of information I want to share with you. Now, first and foremost, what do you actually know about thyroid diagnosis? Do you actually know what your thyroid does? You may have been told you had a thyroid problem. If we're actually going to understand how the thyroid works, what tests should be done, you have to understand how you got here. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about basic thyroid physiology. It's really, really simple. It looks really difficult. It's not, I promise you. Everything starts in the brain, something called the hypothalamus. It releases a hormone that tells the pituitary gland to make something that you've all heard of, TSH. So once TSH is produced, thyroid stimulating hormone is going to tell the thyroid gland to make hormone. So we get that. And TSH is one of the two tests that they're saying you should run. The problem is, once the thyroid gland produces hormones and it makes two hormones, T4 and T3, those hormones still have to do something. Now here's the important thing. T4, 93% of what the body makes is T4. Only 7% is T3. What that means is T4 is not the active form of the hormone. T3 is. So T4 is produced, but it can't be used. It has to be transported throughout the body. It takes a little taxi cab. And it gets turned on. It gets converted from T4 to T3. Now this is important because they don't want to test T3. They don't even want to test free T4. They just say TSH. That's what they're telling you to test. So you have to know how much thyroid hormone the body is actually producing. Once T4 is produced, it converts to T3. 60% of that occurs in the liver, 20% in the gut, and 20% in other tissues. If you don't know how much T4 is converted to T3, you may miss the cause of your problem completely. We see a large percentage of patients who don't have a problem with TSH or with T4, but feel horrible, and it's because their body's not converting T3 because of issues in peripheral thyroid conversion, problems elsewhere in the body. Now, there are certain tests that you have to run, and you talk about the traditional common tests that are run, TSH is what we're talking about. Thyroid stimulating hormone is what they say to run. T4, they may say to run as well. But that's where their standard ends. These are new guidelines, 2013 guidelines, that they're saying to test on. The problem is, if you don't test all the tests, you're going to miss the boat. You need to test free thyroxine index. How much T4 can the body use? Free T4. It can be affected by medications. T3 uptake. How much T3 is being used by the body? How about free T3? It's the active thyroid hormone. How much T4 is converting to T3? Reverse T3, the body doesn't use this. The body's really smart. This is like an overflow valve. If you're on hormone replacement therapy, estrogen hormone replacement therapy, birth control, HRT, reverse T3 could show an abnormality. You have to know that because reverse T3 can block free T3 receptors and create problems with your body using thyroid hormone. How about thyroid antibodies? In 1998, the Journal of Metabolic and Endocrine Disorders, the number one thyroid journal in the world, said 90% of thyroid patients, hypothyroid patients, have an autoimmune cause. 90%, if a patient comes in who has hypothyroidism and they're concerned about their health with me, you have to prove to me they are not autoimmune because likely they are. That's what science says, that's what research says, that's what clinical experience says, and that's what your MDs will agree. But they won't do anything if you have Hashimoto's. How do you know if you have Hashimoto's? You test antibodies. TPO and TBG antibodies, Graves' disease, TSH antibodies, all they're going to do for Graves is put you on a beta blocker for your heart or cut your thyroid out. Maybe kill it with that radioactive iodine. They're not going to treat the immune problem. So, again, the key thing is they're not running the right tests. They, they aren't looking for where the problems are. And they're saying you don't even have to. They don't care. They're giving up on thyroid patients. If you want to learn more about an alternative approach to managing it, my name is Dr. Akiba Green. My website is www.drakibagreen.com. That's A-K-I-B-A, -A, Green. We have a website, charlottethyroidcare.com. We're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. My Facebook page is really robust with tons of great free health information. Lake Norman Health and Wellness is what you're going to Google on Facebook. 
Google on Facebook, which you're going to look up for on Facebook. <laughs> and then our YouTube page is Dr. Akiba Green, all one word. I have over 150 videos on our YouTube page on thyroid secrets, alternative health, food sensitivities, the links between gluten and thyroid, proper testing, everything. Learn more. Don't accept what they're doing with the new standard. You have to look for a better area to get your health. I hope you find what you're looking for. Use me as a resource if you want to. I wanted to make sure I got this information out because I'm mad as heck that these organizations are giving up on all of us. Thank you very much.